LocalBozo.com is proud to welcome our guest on our line at this time, Neon Trees frontman, Tyler Glenn. Tyler, thanks so much for some time today, man. Yeah, glad to be here. Now, you guys have played everywhere from arenas to festivals to amphitheaters. So um, at this stage in your career, uh, what spawned the idea of this run of, of these smaller club shows and intimate night out with Neon Trees? We were we were kind of uh, just kind of in between records. Uh, we, we haven't put out anything new, so we're kind of just thinking like, what what could we do that's a little different? Um, there wasn't really a need to tour, and I think the band wanted to tour, and um, so I thought I thought of the idea to like kind of make it really fan centric and um, play some of the old places we we've played in years ago, and and then some new places we haven't hit. And, um, it's been really, really successful and fun, and um, the type of crowd that we aimed to to get out to come um, has has showed up, and it's it's really like a fun communal time. Um, so yeah, I, I just am happy that we get we get where the stage is in our career where we can do that. It's cool. The band makes a stop locally here at New York City's Irving Plaza on Wednesday, July twenty second. Um, in recent years, you've headlined shows here. Uh, open for bands like The Offspring. What are some of your favorite memories about performing here in New York City over the years? Man, um, I think, I mean, we've we've played a lot of the, of the theaters and clubs. Um, I I remember when we put out our second record, we did two sold-out nights at Bowery, which was really fun. It was intimate, too. And it was we got this similar crowd out where everyone was just kind of there because they really loved the band. Um, and then I, I loved, I don't know, there, we did a Halloween show at Hammerstein Ballroom that I really loved, and it was, we all dressed up as skeletons, and it was it was really kind of a, a cool moment um, visually. Um, and then Summer Stage last year was really, you know, in, in Central Park was really cool because we had opened a couple of years prior, and, and getting the headline was really, really fun, and it was outside, and the weather was really nice, and that was a really cool night. You know, Tyler, your, your voice is among the most distinctive in pop or rock music. Uh, at what age did you, number one, discover you could really sing? And number two, I think you actually might be able to turn this talent into a career. That's really cool of you. Thank you for saying that first of all. But um, I, uh, I I mean, I was grew up in church, so I would sing there. And my, my mom would put me in, like, community theater when I was young. And... So we always knew that I had like a vocal talent, but I didn't know really what to do with it. I didn't know if it was going to be more like a like a trained singer thing, like more more operatic, or should I, you know? And then I, I discovered um, new wave and punk music in seventh grade, and that's all I wanted to to listen to. That's all I wanted to to sing, and um, and my voice has really changed over the years. And so when I when I was in the entry that it got a little more soulful again and um it's been it's been cool to like just really recognize that like it's a it's an instrument now and it's not just like a thing that I like to do and it, it it's fun and it's really like my favorite thing to do is, is to is to sing on a stage. So I um I don't know, it's just like rad that I get to do it now for a living. So Let's talk a little bit about songs I can't listen to. Um, the song doesn't appear on 2014's Pop Psychology, yet uh, you guys released a new video in early June. Now, w was this just a track that you had put together and wanted to get out there for your fans? Um, and, and is there a reason why you guys didn't want to hold on to this for the next album? It's not really like, it's not really like being, I don't know if it was ever meant to be like a like a big push, like a big, next song from us i think it was just a a song that that came really quick to me one one saturday and i i felt like it could be maybe part of an ep and we did more songs and then i think timing wise it just didn't feel right um but you know we worked together with the label to like let us let us at least release the song and um i really love the song i, I don't know if it's going to be attached to anything else soon but but um i really love it and i love that it's part of our show and um i love that fans have connected to it in a cool way so um yeah there's really I, I don't think there was much thought or plan around it 
you mentioned earlier about being between albums. Um, where are you guys at right now as far as putting together some more new music? We we had an EP that, um, you know, timing-wise just didn't make sense. Um, it still exists, I guess. Um, it could be a part of more music, you know, a bigger record or, or I'm not sure. But um, you know, I'm always writing, and that's, that's like my, you know, second, third favorite thing to do is just to to write when I have an idea or to record something when I have an idea. So well not it's it's not it's a big answer. It's just kinda we're kinda like figuring out the next thing. So So your tour dates wrap up at the end of this month. Uh what can we expect from Neon Trees through the rest of the summer and fall? Um nothing from from the band really. Like we're we've got um a couple festival dates. Um over you know no, nothing in the east coast though um and then our our drummer is pregnant and she's drumming currently but she's due next month so life is kind of happening in that way and our our, our bass player's wife is pregnant with their third kid so i think we're going to kind of take a moment to chill and figure out the next thing but um but there will be more for sure is there anything you've been aiming to do outside of the band maybe use your celebrity toward another project or something you're particularly passionate about yeah, I mean, I'm kind of, I've been writing a lot of music um, that doesn't sound like Neon Trees, and so I'm figuring out maybe if that's going to be another thing that I work on, maybe this upcoming, you know, little time. Um, and then I've been really into, like, local work in Utah with, with Equality Utah and, and talking um, talking to a lot of religious people about about what it is, you know, to be gay from my perspective, and and trying to find the balance between spirituality and being gay and, and growing up that way. So I'm doing a couple keynotes in September and October, talking to groups of people like that in, in, in Utah. So I enjoy doing that on the side as well. It's kind of enjoyable for me. Yeah, I mean, it only makes sense to, to use that level of celebrity to really further your message. Um, you know, you certainly seem to really embody the role of front man. Uh, what's inspired your your eccentric wardrobe, and and who's been perhaps the biggest influence on you personally uh, as your career has really blossomed? Um, with clothing wise, I, I I was just always attracted to like bigger and more colorful and more shiny. Um, when I would go see see bands play, so like, or or I'd see like concerts in in you know on TV or something. Like to me, like. Freddie Mercury and David Bowie and those are the type of of like artists that like always just like turn me on and uh, you know but even more recently like uh, Karen O from the IAS has always been like an inspiration to me um just really over the top and just like amazing and but even Lady Gaga I, I think is really you know inspiring when she's really on I think it's really really powerful so um you know it's a wide range but I think I like. I just always like have been really into like the powerful, you know, pointed, um, deliberate, you know, type of artists. So, to this point, the band's been wildly successful. I mean, you've had three full-length albums, countless hit singles. You've toured all over the world. Uh, what's been the biggest challenge for you in more recent years? Now that you have found a strong fan base that looks for and is excited about the band's music. You know, there's a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff that that. Um, it, you know, it's, it's a rad blessing to be able to be in a band that, that everyone thinks is is always, like, succeeding. Um, and that's the coolest thing. The challenge is really just, like, figuring out, you know, the right moves and the next the next thing and who to work with and, um, and, and figuring out the right people on your team and things like that. So, like, it, it's kind of more of a boring thing, but it's so it's so important, you know? So, um, I would say that's the first thing that comes to mind. It's just kind of like all the moving parts and figuring out how to keep them moving. Um, when everything's still great. Cause like on the creative side, I feel like the ideas still are flowing. Like we have a lot of great music to, to make still. Um, but it's just like kind of figuring out the other, the business side, which is always kind of lame, but, um, but it's been good so far, you know, and I, I'm not going to complain too much. But, uh, but yeah, that's the stuff that, like, people don't see, you know. Absolutely. Well, listen, man, thanks so much for your time today. Is there anything else you'd like to leave for our readers here at LocalBozo.com? 
Um, I just appreciate like anybody that cares to read or listen to something that we have to say. So thank you very much. Tyler Glenn and Neon Trees return to New York City for an intimate show at Irving Plaza on Wednesday, July 22nd. Tickets are available now. Tyler, you've been so generous with your time today. Really looking forward to having you back in New York City, man. All the best of luck on tour this year. All right, cool, man. Take care. Thank you.